I'm an alumnus of Oxford and Cambridge. He can go and be verified. Verified. His Excellency Mr. Greg Pitobi was yesterday at Princeton University in the United States of America. <laughs> And during that section, Peter Obi was with fire. Yes. Peter Obi said, my name is Peter Obi. And I went to University of Nigeria and Suka. I will not give a court injunction. I will not file an appeal to stop you from going to get my certificate from the university. <laughs> you know, Peter Obi over the years has remained consistent on preaching about integrity. That it is only integrity and credibility and electing men and women of capacity is the only way we can move this country forward. Peter Obi went further to lament on the current certificate bruhaha currently trending in the Nigeria and outside Nigeria. In fact, man, don't talk too much. Mona, hear Peter Obi first. Good behavior. This is a part of leadership. So he can be done. We have all the talents and everything all over the world. It's a question of the leadership has to show it. We have to start by saying, my name is Peter Obi. And from this time, I went to this primary school, this secondary school, this university, <laughs> and did it plan. This is a very, they're very important. You know, when Chica was saying my CV, he said Harvard. I said, no, Chica, I did a program in Harvard. <laughs> I'm an alumnus of Oxford and Cambridge. You can go and be verified. Verified. <laughs> I don't need to. I, need, I don't need to put injunction for you not to see it. Go and tell them in Osaka whether they give you my transcript. <laughs> These are things we must, and we must do it and say this is who we are, because that's what makes us. Nobody said you must be anything. No, we have had leaders all over the world who didn't go to school. Just say this is who I am. These are my parents. These are my children. <laughs> you know? So we will do that. Possible. All we are saying is that Nigerians must, of all sides, join us in rescuing this country from its captors. For inside this video, the judiciary, specifically the Supreme Court judges, are now pleading and begging on Nigeria. Specifically, the justices who passed judgment at the appeal court level are currently pleading on Nigerians home and abroad to stop criticizing them, to stop giving malicious criticism on them, begging Nigeria to give them a benefit of doubt over the rulings of the presidential election petition court tribunal well i don't want to talk too much for here because why in this country we have seen several cases and several examples why an average nigerian should doubt the credibility of some of these of, our, of some of these our judges and and the lawyers and the justices in fact as you watch this video drop your opinion drop your comment and share this video man other person see him. god bless you the court of appeal and its justices have been, permit me to say, trending lately in both conventional and social media. The proceedings and verdicts of your lordships on the presidential election attracted considerable attention, particularly hard work and industry required to prepare, write, and deliver judgments, which also brought to light the detailed and painstaking attributes of the Nigerian judicial, ju Nigerian justices and judges. It is beyond debate that an effective judiciary must remain independent and impartial. This remains an essential component of the rule of law and democratic governance as well as key driver of economic growth. I must remark that it is the abiding duty of both the litigant and legal practitioners to insulate the judiciary from improper or extraneous pressure on due media vilification and partisan criticisms. The right to freedom of expression comes with it its limitations. It is not an avenue to engage in extreme or outlandish criticisms, inclusive of direct veiled threats of violence, 
capable of exerting improper pressure on the judges in the discharge of their judicial duties. Although political and other high-profile cases come with their own huge expectations and tensions, it is, however, abhorrent for any legal practitioner or judicial officer to be threatened, harassed, or worse still, attacked simply for doing their job. Why such sinful conduct are unacceptable, I enjoy the legal practitioners, political gladiators, and their supporters to exercise restraint and demonstrate respect for the judiciary. For the judiciary. We must have faith in our trials and appellate processes, defend and not ridicule them in our, over, in our overall common interest. I share the mantra which states that a judiciary can only be as good as the judges that man it. Therefore, in order to improve the welfare and independence of our judiciary, it has become pertinent for us to make, a targeted, to make targeted investments in the judiciary in terms of adequate remuneration, timely recruitment of competent hands, structured and deliberate capacity building, upgrade of court facilities, introduction of technology, 